Hi everyone, it's the 25th of January 2023 and I'm here on board a Comeng suburban train coming into the city from North Melbourne. In this video we're going to do something a bit different. I'm going to take you on a walk through the Melbourne CBD starting at Southern Cross Station. It's a warm weekday afternoon, about 30 degrees Celsius, and we're just going to go for a bit of an aimless stroll through the city, which is something I quite enjoy doing. And you're going to come along with me in real time, if you want. Along the way I'm going to point out a few interesting things, and most importantly we're going to see some trains and loads of trams. This video is nearly an hour long, I've only cut out a handful of short bits where absolutely nothing was happening, but what I want to achieve with this format is to create a little snapshot of the city as it was on this particular day. Now arriving at Southern Cross. I want you to imagine what this same walk might have looked like back in the 80s or the 50s or the 20s and think about how some of the more mundane things today will be fascinating in years to come. And if you've never been to Melbourne, hopefully this gives you a bit of perspective on what the CBD is actually like, not just the highlights. This is a Northern Group train, so we're coming in on Platform 11, and this train will continue to Flinders Street, where it will form a summary service via the City Loop. And there's someone taking some pictures, probably a rail fan. Say hi in the comments if that's you. So you can see down on the country platforms, there are lots of trains waiting to go out for their evening peak runs out to regional Victoria. Uh, mostly Velocity DMUs down there, but there are a couple of locomotive hold H sets down there as well. That old clock over there on the right was built in 1882 and used to be at Flinders Street Station. It has a really interesting history. I'll put a link down below uh, if you want to read more about that. Um, so we're walking out the main entrance onto Spencer Street here. Um, so Route 96 trams run left to right here. You can see a, an E-Class just uh, coming past behind that bus there. Uh, in fact, that's 6001, the first E-Class, the class leader. Um, then, running right left here, we have Collins Street. So, routes 11 and 48 run up the hill there. And then, okay, here comes another E-Class, 6090, a bit closer to the other end of the scale. There's 100 of them all up on a route 11, running down into Collins Street. 
And we also have uh, routes 12 and 109, which come out of Collins Strait there and then turn right down the hill down Spencer Street. So this is quite a busy tram intersection. Notice that street is called Commissioner's Lane and that's named after the Victorian Railways Commissioners who used to hang out in this very large building on the right here which is the former Victorian Railways head office. Uh, it's now a fancy hotel but uh, it is an interesting piece of Victoria's railway history and if we have a look on the door here, Victorian Railways Administrative Offices. So there you go. Straight ahead you can just catch a glimpse of an ex trapless train running on the viaduct in there and here's our first C-Class 3006 running on Route 109 so that will turn right into Collins Street there. There seems to be some signage on the ground here telling me to walk straight ahead towards the trams and ignore those um, buses on the left there. Very sound advice. And here we are approaching the intersection of Flinders Street and we can see our first B2 class tram running across there heading towards Docklands. And here's an A class on Route 12. This thing is a W class tram impaled on its end in the ground. Um, it's very anatomically correct and it looks very convincing so lots of people think that it's a real tram but it is just a, an artwork of complete recreation um, but pretty interesting feature. This is a great spot to watch trams and trains in the same spot although because of the low angle you can really only see clearly see trains on the closest of the, uh, the six viaduct tracks. Another E class there. You probably noticed the very prominent Made in Melbourne for Melbourne decals on the side of the E classes. Uh, they're built. Um, a, 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 in a factory in Dandenong um, and we like to let people know that and that B class over there was actually also built in the same factory back in the um, they were built in the late 80s and, uh, and early 90s so uh, we did have a patch of buying trams from overseas in between but um, a lot of the trams you see here are made in Melbourne
and here comes an extrapolar set running over the viaduct. Uh, two extrapolar sets, in fact. One on the Burnley group, and the closer one is on the Clifton Hill group. So Flinders Street uh, normally has routes 70 and 75 running along it in the city circle. Um, however, it's a bit busier today and there are quite a lot of extra trams uh, because the Australian Open is happening, and um, which is a gigantic tennis thing, apparently. I don't really follow sport, but um, we will see a lot of extra trams on Flinders Street. Normally it's uh, actually not one of the busiest streets. And um, we will actually see some classes of tram on Flinders Street that we don't normally see there. Just sneaking in there on the right, you can see our first W-Class tram, which run exclusively on Route 35, which is the City Circle. It's a, a free tourist route. Now this is mostly a walk, but um, I just decided I want to catch a tram just a little way up from the street because this bit is a bit boring and why not go for a ride on a tram? We might as well. So you can see a lot of people here waiting to go to the tennis and there's a lot of extra staff standing around um, instructing people how to get to the tennis because apparently people get really confused by that. major sporting events tend to attract a lot of people that don't normally use public transport so there's a huge effort involved in uh, communicating extra information to them. And here we have an E-Class which as I said earlier you will not normally see on Flinders Street um, so they've been brought in for extra capacity for the tennis. Normally you just have A's, B's and W's on Flinders Street um, so all relatively low capacity trams, um, so during major sporting events they do tend to bring out some bigger trams and run them as uh, short workings on Route 70. Notice that some of these special trams have um, run numbers pinned up in the window just on bits of paper. Here we have a W class, and I think we might hop on this and go for a short ride. So this particular W class is W8 number 888. Uh, it was originally built in 1943 and as a SW6 class. Um, and then completely rebuilt in 2020 as a W8 class. The W8s are basically a modern rebuild uh, designed for intensive use on the city circle today. And there's actually not much of the original tram left. They're basically 
a new tram from the ground up. They do use some of the same components, but um, it was a really, really major rebuild. So they've got a lot of modern electronics in them um, and they've really been designed to meet modern standards for running in the city every day like they do now. So all the city circle trams that you see on the route today are W8 class that have been rebuilt in the last few years. And it's not just the tennis, the city circle is usually this busy. Every time I've caught it in the last few years, it's been like this. It's very, very difficult to get a seat. And before anyone else points it out, yes, I am aware that I complained about people who catch a tram for just one stop in one of my other videos. see this car park here is advertising $10 parking. I would like to just point out that for less than $10 you can travel on Melbourne's public transport all day indefinitely, absolutely everywhere, all over the network. So um, yeah. Over there on the right you can see 
Melbourne's tallest buildings on South Bank. There's the Eureka Tower, which was formerly our tallest building, and uh, also Australia 108, which is our recently built skyscraper, which I think is actually the tallest building in Australia now. So we're now arriving at the intersection of Market Street, which is where tram route 58 runs north-south. And we might hang around here for a moment until we actually see a Route 58 tram. Ah, that tram there is 2003, uh, B2 class 2003, which is the B2 class class leader. Um, bit of a technicality because 2001 and 2002 were B1 class trams, of which there are only two, and they're both now withdrawn. So 2003 is the B2 class class leader and the oldest B class in service. And you can just see a Z-Class arriving underneath the viaduct there on a northbound Route 58. Uh, this is the first Z3 class we've seen. They are the oldest trams on the network, not including the W class. Uh, so they're the, the oldest trams in normal service. Well, let's just have a look at this bus here. Oh, I'm joking, I'm not looking at the bus. There's an E-class there. And it wouldn't be a trip into the CBD if you didn't see somebody nearly get run over. So that is Z3 class number 119, which entered service in 1980. I think it's the fourth Z3 class, so it's one of the oldest ones. I'd just like to apologise to any bus fans. I do like to tease buses, but I actually don't hate them, and they definitely have a legitimate role in public transport, and I do use them a lot. So, um, But they are fun to make fun of sometimes, so sorry about that. This car park is promising night parking for $18. Wow.
Over there are the Banana Alley vaults, which is kind of a series of shops sticking underneath the railway, which I, I think were built by the railways as just a sort of form of revenue. Um, they're kind of filled with like weird gyms and things now, there's nothing particularly exciting over there, um, but they are a piece of railway history. That is a quality looking vehicle right there. That little shop over there used to be a porn shop until fairly recently. I do mean porn, not porn. Um, it looks like the internet's finally caught up with it though and it's gone out of business. So you can now see over on the right the magnificent Flinders Street Station, which is the central point of the suburban network. And the that big clock tower is the Elizabeth Street clock tower. Oh look at those parking rates, $25. Wow. Who the hell drives to these places? So here we are at Elizabeth Street and over there is the Elizabeth Street Terminus which is the terminus of routes uh, 59, 57 and 19. Um, this part of the street has been like partially pedestrianised but they're still letting cars in for some local traffic which is quite annoying because this is just a really small number of people in private vehicles holding up all the pedestrians trying to get to the tram stop. So hopefully they'll uh, completely pedestrianise that at some point. Come on, move. Come on. And it's actually two B classes sitting here, both on Route 59. It's unusual, there might be some kind of delay happening here. Not sure if you heard that, but the driver said the police are on their way, so something's happening in that left hand tram. So I'm just going to uh, keep heading on up here. This stop is a bit old fashioned, it's very narrow, far narrower than it needs than it should be. It's a very busy place. Apologise for those uh, flickering destination boards on the trams, that's just uh, an issue with the frame rate on the camera. They, the destination boards flicker at 50 hertz, and it's um, uh, without shooting in fully manual, it's a little bit hard to uh, capture that properly. So here's a Z class just about to depart. Heading for West Maribyrnong on Route 57.
just going to walk over here. This is the part that has been pedestrianised, so I don't need to worry too much about being run over, except by bicycle delivery drivers. So you can see there's a big scissor cross over here. Trams can use either of those two platforms. Whoops, another guy nearly getting run over. And just here we have our first D2 class tram, which are the big five section Siemens Combino on Route 19. There we go, they must have uh, kicked whoever it was off that tram because it seems to have departed. Oh, that's going to be a very high frequency on the Route 59 there. The second one's following it out as well. Coming back up to Collins Street here, which uh, has routes 11, 12, 48 and 109. Uh, so it's a pretty busy street. Uh, you can see those cars there are doing a hook turn, which is a famous Melbourne manoeuvre where you have to wait on the left hand side of the intersection to turn right. That avoids uh, blocking trams that are trying to pass through the intersection while you wait to turn. class is advertising travel to Taiwan and it has some pictures of Taiwanese trains on the side of it. Those poor little A class get absolutely jam packed on Collins Street. It's a very busy street and they are very small trams. Over there on the right, there is a C-Class tram approaching on Route 109, and this is one of our art trams. So every year, Melbourne has an art tram program where one tram from each depot gets um, done up in a special livery uh, designed by an artist. Uh, this year, they are all done by Indigenous artists, and this particular tram is a really interesting one. It's actually a reproduction of a, um, an artwork done by Lynn Onus in the 90s. It was originally applied to a W-class tram 
uh, and it's been reproduced this year on a C-Class, which is really cool. That's C-Class 3023. We're now approaching Swanston Street, which is well known in the tram world as being the busiest tram route in the world. And it carries eight routes, and I'm going to try and remember them off the top of my head. It is routes 1, 3, 5, 6, 16, 72, 64 and 67. Um, and Obviously we're here at Swanston and Collins, and Collins Street itself has four routes on it, which I believe makes this the, well that's the busiest street that Swanston Street crosses. So this is the busiest tram intersection in the world, in terms of the number of routes passing through, and presumably the number of trams passing through. Over on the other side of the intersection there you can see the work site for the new Town Hall station which is going to be part of the Melbourne Metro Tunnel. It's going to be a huge underground station basically connected to Flinders Street through a uh, pedestrian subway a bit further down the hill. So, uh, Private road vehicles are banned from Swanson Street, so it's become a, a pretty major thoroughfare, not only of trams, but also of bikes and of course pedestrians. However, it's not perfect, and I think they could do a bit to make it better for pedestrians still. That's Melbourne Town Hall over there, we're just going to talk across so there's nothing coming and uh, which seems to have a whole lot of garden beds out the front at the moment which is pretty cool. have a D1 class tram which are the smaller three section combinos 
in fact that is the class leader, 3501. So um, well, we're doing pretty well here with class leaders. And we're now approaching Burke Street with routes uh, 86 and 96. And off to the left there is Burke Street Mall, which is Melbourne's best example of a pedestrianised section. Um, it's nicely paved and everyone just sort of wanders around everywhere when there are no trams coming and the trams just crawl slowly through the pedestrians and it's mostly not as problematic as you might think and it's just a really nice open space. It would be great to see more of the CBD, lots more of the CBD uh, turned into something like that. And here we can see a rubbish truck. It's about to turn left into Burke Street, but there is a private car on the tram line there in the tram stop in Burke Street, which is a very common problem. And it's going to block the path of this rubbish truck, which is uh, really struggling to take the turn there. The rubbish truck has just blown out its tyre and that car just went off down into Burke Street Mall. Great. I've just cut out a minute or so of footage there, I went over to uh, check on the edge of the, the tram platform, the rubbish truck had actually dislodged the corner bit of stone at the edge of the platform and I was just uh, checking that it wasn't going to uh, foul the next tram that comes through and uh, just having a bit of a chat to those people. So um, the, the stone is loose but uh, it looks like it's staying where it is so hopefully we're all fine. Now at this point I should mention we've actually managed to see one of every class of Melbourne tram except for a C2 class bumblebee 
Uh, there are only five of them, so they're easy to miss, and they only run on Route 96, which is on Burke Street, which we've just left, so we won't see one now, but a uh, pretty good effort seeing every other type. You might notice a common theme here of private vehicles with a single person in them stopped in very inconvenient places. This is Lonsdale Street, which is a pretty major bus corridor uh, with a lot of buses coming in, particularly from the eastern suburbs. got another art tram coming here this is um, a d1 class number 3532 this artwork is by Patricia McKean Here's another D2 class, the five section version. Uh, they are mostly on 
uh, Route 19 back over on Elizabeth Street, but some of them do run over here on Route 6. This is the this is the state library tram stop, and you can see it can be a bit of a problem with the cycle lane runs along the tram platform. So uh, cyclists have to be very careful of passengers. Obviously, some are much more careful than others. There's a lovely lawn area in front of the state library over there, which is a great place to sit and have lunch, especially if you want to watch lots of trams which if you've got to this stage of the video, I'd say you probably do. Guy exhibiting some very interesting fashion in this there. Okay, that's enough trams for today. We're going to go down underground now to Melbourne Central Station, which is one of the underground stations on the City Loop. And uh, we're going to walk into Melbourne Central Shopping Centre, which is built on the top of it. This station was originally called Museum until the shopping centre was built and it was renamed Melbourne Central. It might not be particularly obvious at this stage that we're entering one of the busiest railway stations on the network and this very narrow walkway here is a little bit problematic at peak times. <laughs> so this part of the building was built around the shop tower which is this historic building on the left here. Uh, over on the right there's this giant uh, stopwatch thing which on the hour opens up and has this little display which I found quite terrifying as a kid. There's the shop tower. It's got this big glass dome built over the top of it. So we are indoors here, but there is plenty of natural light. Now we're going to go down to the station. And uh, if you're going to stand still on the escalator, you're supposed to stand over on the left. But a lot of people really suck at that. So we're now at the concourse level, which also has a food court and a whole lot of shops. The footage is a little bit blurry here, I'm sorry, it's a part of the um, it's using a much slower shutter speed in this low light area. That combined with the stabilizer makes it a little bit blurry. Not too bad. Now coming down onto platforms one and two. Platform two over on the right, which is the Caulfield Group, is currently closed for track work. And there's a few minutes till my train, so we're gonna actually go down to the next level down, platforms three and four, which is the Burnley Group over on the right on four, and the Northern Group on the left see there's currently an ex trapless train arriving on the Burnley Group and a Comenge on the left heading for Upfield on the Northern Group. I believe the, this platform is the lowest elevation platform in Victoria.
now I have to head back up to the Clifton Hill Group platform, platform one, because I can actually hear my train arriving. And here we have an extrapolis set bound for Mernda. So if you've made it all the way through this video, thank you so much for coming along on this journey. Um, if you enjoy this sort of thing, I probably will make some more videos like this in the future. I certainly enjoy this kind of uh, very slow paced uh, wandering around and seeing what's going on around the city. And uh, if, uh, if you like this sort of thing, uh, why not try it for yourself? If you live in a city that's uh, fairly walkable like this, um, go out on a nice day and uh, just enjoy seeing all there is to see. Thanks for watching.